Okay, everybody, I'm going to get started now. I just wanted to start with thanking everybody for participating today. We uh, This is our second of a series of three uh, that we have scheduled, but we're going to, you know, after this, probably do uh, one a month. Um, but uh, they've been quite successful. We've had at least uh, 50 registered for each one so far. So uh, it seems that people are enjoying getting a chance to meet some of our athletes. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick uh, note of some upcoming events. We have a referee summer that uh, is going to be tomorrow on the 25th and another one on May 16th. The last one we had over 120 uh, people registered for it. And then we have our girls judo Tabata training on Wednesday. That is a series of six trainings and we have over uh, 60 registered for that. And then we have, uh, we're changing our youth academy virtual trainings. As it, right now, we've been combining HP and Youth Academy. And so what we're going to be doing is uh, separating the two groups. And we're going to allow you 14 orange belts and up starting on May 4th for on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. So clubs that aren't doing a lot of virtual trainings or trainings at all, other members of Judo Ontario will be able to join in. Uh, and then we're also going to start back our adult veteran virtual trainings every Friday, starting on May 4th. And that's gonna be open to uh, Yellow Belts and Up. So uh, we used to have that in, in June in person, but now we're gonna to try to do that virtual. And then uh, the high performance training programs, they're gonna be just, uh, it's no longer gonna have the Youth Academy uh, starting on May 4th. And then the next chat with a champion will be Keegan Young. Uh, and that is going to be on May 5th. The time is going to be 12.30 instead of 11.30 because of the change of the uh, schedule for the uh, HP and the Youth Academy because now there's two classes on Saturday instead of one. So I'm just gonna start off with showing a little video. You'll notice these little uh, teddy bears. These are uh, some of uh, Shadi's favorites. He brings them to tournaments with them. So I thought I would uh, showcase them on the video here. Okay, here we go. Awesome. And just before we get going, I just want to make a few introductions. We have uh, Stephen Sheffield here, our sport director of Juno Ontario. If you can give us a wave. And then we also have James Miller, our technical coaching director. Is he, are you here, James? Uh, oh, there he is. Yeah. I see you. Yes. And uh, I wanted to introduce Carlene Young, who's our girls to batter training sense, sensei. And uh, she's been uh, helping a lot also putting this together. So I wanted to thank her. And I believe we have some board members on. I, I see Heather and uh, Tony. So forgive me if I, I, if I miss you. And I also see our first vice president, Chris Brown. If you can give us a little wave. Remember our, our referee committee is Mohammed. He's here somewhere. There you go. And then, uh, and Michelle Grace is, is our host. She's been uh, really helpful in helping us out, be the interviewer during this process. Michelle is a social media reporter from Six Buzz TV. She's worked for Flow 93.5, Boom 97.3,
and Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Grace. Thank you, Brian. I'm your host today, guys. Welcome. Um, thank you for joining us with Chat with a Champion. I'm here with, obviously, Shadi Elnaza. And um, you're going to go through some of the, the slides today, as well as talk to him about some, ask him some questions, as well as go through all his accomplishments, as you can see on the slide here. Um, he has won many gold medalists um, for Grand Slam Tbilis, I think, and Pan Am Championships, um, Grand Slam Budapest, and ben, uh, Pan American Championships. Lima Gold, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> but um, a lot um, of uh, gold medalists as well as, um, sorry, I had a little glitch with my computer. Um, but yes, I we do have a, a video that we will play um, towards the end, but I will be going through some questions um, for Shadi, is that okay? Could we get started? Yeah. yeah. Is this share? Can you see the screen anymore? I wanted to close that. Yeah, for some reason it glitched. Sorry. And I couldn't read the screen, but um, I think that's just my Wi-Fi. I'm so sorry. Okay. I think it's back. Yes. All right. So where are you training now? Uh, now I'm in Montreal at the INS. It's uh, where basically all the athletes that want to be carded or want to like make it to the Olympics or something have to train. So yeah, I've been doing that for three years now. Wow. Yeah. So what has helped you stay motivated during this pandemic? Honestly, I was, I'm a very easygoing type of guy. So when the Olympics got postponed, I was like, it's not the end of the world because I also have people around me that like, I see them and they have other stuff going on for them. So I was like, of course, judo is my main thing in my life right now, but it's not the only thing. So mm -hmm. it kind of became, I was able to, to look elsewhere in like for, for, for a second until, until training got back together and everything. So I kind of was like, okay, I'll, it's, a, it's a healthy break for my mind because I was very burnt out. We did, I took around 45 planes in uh, 2019. So that was, that was, that destroyed me mentally and physically. So it was a good, it was a healthy break to take, I think. Of course, I would have rather have the Olympics, but uh, that's not how life goes, I guess. But everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah, yeah. What are some obstacles then, I guess, that you've faced with your oh. judo career given this well, year? A, a lot of rules changing. <laughs> that, was, that was a very big part because so, uh, I was ranked fourth last year when the Olympics were supposed to happen and I had to maintain my positioning to stay seated for an extra year, which was very challenging to do. And uh, yeah, now I went down to number seventh in the world, but I'm still in the top eight. So hopefully that stays that way until the games. But yeah, that was probably my most challenging thing. It was a lot of stress to deal with that, but uh, so far so good, I guess. Especially with media and people. And yeah, yeah. Understandable. But where do you get your discipline and motivation? Like, where does it stem from? Honestly, it's from, from I was, when I first was, when I was first in Egypt, I hated judo. I really hated that sport. And then when I came to Canada, I went to JCCC, uh, Sensei Ken, and of course, Yusuf and everybody around me, like helped me kind of man up, as you can say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was more of a, like a soccer boy. I didn't want to do judo. And then I did nationals in 2012. And then I remember I fought a giant and I surprisingly won. It was very funny actually how I won. And, uh, yeah, after that, I kind of was like, okay, I, I can actually do this for, for a living. And then, of course, the more you practice judo, the more involved you are. And uh, you learn the, the lifestyle of, of being a, a warrior, you can say. So it kind of makes you automatically become disciplined in everywhere in your life, not just in judo, too. That's amazing. So how do you handle yourself under pressure then? Uh, I'd say, um, again, I'm, I feel like I'm an easygoing guy. So I kind of don't like to think about the stress of it until it's time to deal with it. So I won't think before I have a competition, I won't think about the tournament at all until the day of wins where I have to make weight and then tournament day. So I kind of like to distract myself until it's time to deal with it because I feel like if I like overthink, overthink, I don't, I don't perform as well as I, I like, I'd, I'd hope to do. So I kind of got used to just dealing with it when it like faces me 
at the time and I don't like to overthink about it and the butterflies and yeah yeah um so what color gi do you prefer to wear uh, I used to like wearing blue I don't know I thought I looked better in blue but then once I became seated I never was able to wear blue because the higher you're seating you're always at the top of the pool so you always have to wear the white gi so I kind of learned to 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 wear the white one and like it better and also when there's blood on it you feel kind of like it's like that, you know hey, Shadi, you have a pinky don't you pinky pink a pinky a oh, pink gi. I mean, I mean, I can buy, I'll buy one. Yeah, yeah, I think you should. I think you should. It'd be a great color for you. For the next photo shoot, I will, 100%. He has a short <laughs> sleeve one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, what are some mental tips that we can learn from you to be on your professional level one day? I think it's mostly you got to believe in yourself. I feel like a lot of, a lot of athletes internationally just, it kind of became, I think, just go do a competition, it became automatic and didn't become like a thing where like, oh, I can actually win this tournament. They should go in there and like hope for the best. I go in every tournament thinking I am the best, even if it doesn't turn out that way that day. But every tournament I go into, I, I feel like I just like, I should win that competition. Because when I stress out, it's not because I feel like, oh, I'm finding this guy, he's so good. And it's more of like, yeah, I need to just be on that day and I can win the whole thing. And that's kind of became my thing. A year ago, I was stressing, I was like, always overthinking like this guy's good but then as more as like you gain experience on the circuits it becomes easier to like change and like drift your mentality into a better more positive way for sure but walking in with confidence says a lot about you yeah and I feel like once you win one like when I won in Osaka like against Fonseca who's the world champion now it kind of was like oh damn like I'm, I'm actually good and then after that one fight it kind of made me be like okay it's just they're all people that you can be you know they're not that special you know not trying to this one second or everything is a world champion you know? <laughs> no there's no beef there's no beef yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's your biggest cheerleader I think my brother honestly yeah I think Mohab because uh again I wouldn't be doing judo honestly if it wasn't for Mohab and uh, I was actually right side. I was I was a righty. I was fighter righty, and Mohab would kick my butt so bad. I had to switch to be the defensive to fight lefty, and then I became a left sided fighter. So and now works in my favor being a left sided fighter. And yeah, honestly, I learned like every tournament Mohab goes on with me. Mohab's my brother, by the way. So nobody knows. <laughs> and uh, yeah, every tournament he goes with me, he tries to coach me and everything. So it kind of it became a, a routine to have him there, and I think I perform better when he's there. That's good. I was like, yeah, try to like snoop and see where he is on the stands. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, what, so like, what is it like traveling now and competing now? I hate traveling. Honestly, I don't, I very dislike the travel part. I like arriving to the country and like taking my first nap. I think that's the best part of the whole trip other than meddling, of course. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of like taking the planes and all the turbulence and stuff, but I'm super grateful to see. I, I've seen countries I never thought I would see. For example, like when I went to Mongolia, I don't think anybody's like, oh, let me go to Mongolia for a vacation, you know? So, it be, and I love the country and like the people are great over there. So I kind of, I'm very grateful that it showed me like new cultures that I never thought I would like be interested into like knowing more about. And honestly, the more you travel, the more things you pick up. So my judo changed a lot as I like traveled and as I fought other people from other countries. So I kind of, kind of think it's like a, it's a big blessing. I'm very grateful that I could uh, travel that much as much as I did. That's great. Yeah. And it's good to be grateful for yeah. right now with what we're going through um, in Ontario. Yeah. What were some of the most memorable moments for you during this season then? Uh, honestly, it was uh, the process of it. I kind of, yeah, honestly, it's the process of it. I like, I liked the, the challenges it faced a little bit more than the competitions uh yeah of course when my first medal I think my first medal after the pandemic was my my best one like it was my Budapest bronze medal and it was the one right after the pandemic the first one and I beat uh Nikiforov who actually just won the Europeans oh, so wow. I think yeah and he like when I was 16 I fought him in like a very small tournament in VZ and he like beat me up in that tournament so it was kind of like damn I actually got a lot better than last time so it was it was a nice feeling, you know. I like I like to win the last fight. You know, when you like have a rivalry with somebody and you win the last fights, yeah, yeah. 
So it's kind of plus practice makes perfect. Like you know, you're true. Yeah, yeah, honestly, of course. Yeah, and I have people around me like helping me a lot through along the way. You know. So walk us through like a day in the life of you. Like how to like what do you do right when you wake up? What's what's your schedule like? Uh, now it uh, well the schedule kept changing. Of course, as the pandemic happened, but now wake up 8 a.m. Walk my dog. Uh, then rush to training. I don't have breakfast. I'm not a breakfast type of person, but everybody should eat your breakfast. It's just me. I can't in the morning. And uh, yeah, go to training, gym, then go back home, see my mom because she lives nearby. Say mm-hmm. hi to her, spend time with her, then go to my second training, then come back home, walk my dog, eat and sleep. And then, yeah. That's good. A, lot, like of, a lot of Call of Duty too. Maybe. <laughs> yes, PS4. Love it. Yeah. Um, who would you say is your biggest competitor today? Uh, honestly, like it's, uh, I don't think I have one specific competitor. I feel like it's just the day. If like, for example, like Aaron Wolf, the Japanese has his day, he was really good. Then he'll be my biggest competitor of that day. So I really don't think I have one specific person and I don't like to think that way. I just want to go there and like win and uh, I don't care who's in front of me. But of course, there's a Russian and the Japanese that I haven't beaten yet. So those are two on my list to, 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 to avenge my losses against them, you can say. Good mindset. Yeah. Hope yeah, so I'm much. the type of person, if I lose like, against that person more than once, it's like kind of stays in the back of my head. And like, I can't, like, I have to, I pray to God I meet him again to fight him again, you know? For sure. But okay, so what are the types of meals, for example, like when you go into a competition, like how do you prepare for that? Uh, I don't really have to cut weight. I'm super light. I'm 100 kilos on the dot. So, of course, I'll try to, I'm trying to bulk up a little bit. So I eat a lot of everything I see in front of me. But of course, that's like when I'm in competition after the plane, I'm very bloated after planes. So I try to eat minimal because after the planes, I get, I get like put on all the sodium in my body, it like makes me heavy. Mm-hmm. So I need, need to eat like smaller portions until I like acclimate to the, to the, every, like to the new country I'm in. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's honestly whatever they have at the buffet or at the restaurant, whatever they give us, I'll mm-hmm. eat. So I'm not, I'm not a picky person, but of course I have to eat as clean as possible. And yeah, just the after weigh-ins, I like to have two dinners. So I'll have one right after weigh-ins and then I'll, I'll pack one up for later. Like at like 11 PM before the comp- uh, before I sleep. Cause uh, in the morning, the stress are kind of building up. So I don't eat as much. Mm-hmm. So kind of like stock up the night before. Good to know. These are tips. They're good to know. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Uh, double Olympic champion and opening my clinic slash gym, hopefully. That's the plan. Yeah, I think. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's big goals, but I think it's doable, you know, especially. Yeah, I think big dreams, big goals, but that's the way to go, you know, like reach for the sky and then you at think- least if you don't achieve it, you're like a little bit under, but you're still good, you know, you don't you don't aim low and hope and get lower, you know. For sure. How are you going to get up? Yeah. So thank you, Shadi. We're going to go through um, another video, Brian. But before we do that, um, if you'd like to support and donate, um, there is a GoFundMe page for Shadi. You can um, see that later um, with uh, after our presentation. But here's a video. You guys can sit, think of some questions that you want to ask him and anything else that... Um, comes to your mind, all right? You guys see that? Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. All right. So it's now your turn, guys, to ask the questions. And um, we would love to see your faces. So if you could put on your camera, that would be great. Um, I know everyone's at home now, so we all get it. But um, yeah, I'll hand it to Brian and we can see if you guys any questions or you can raise your hand or in the chat. Yeah, Delana. I've got a question from Delana. Delana. 
or Delina, sorry. It's Delana, yeah. Delana, okay. So Shadi, how did it feel coming first on your birthday? Oh yeah, it was really good. It was honestly very, I was kind of unlucky that it landed right on my birthday, but I kind of, kind of motivated me because in my head, I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. Like getting a gold medal on your birthday, you know, like not a lot of people have that. So it was, it was kind of, it was kind of a very, very good moment at the time to, to win, you know, because it was like, uh, I'm not really a big birthday type of person. So it was kind of very, very different from what I used to I have like a, such a, it kind of felt like a really big birthday to me, you know, winning a gold medal, my first gold medal in Grand Slam on my birthday was kind of like a fairy tale, you know, it's like a Disney movie. <laughs> Uh, okay can I answer the questions on the chat right away because there's questions on the chat yeah what age did you start judo I started at the age of four because uh, my brother started at the age of six and we're two years difference and I was like oh my brother my big brother's doing it might as well do it hated it because I would get beat up by Mohab all the time and Yusuf and Safe and sometimes Sensei can too and uh, so I kind of I was doing it in Egypt, of course. Then I stopped to do soccer for a couple of years. And then I was like, okay, soccer is not for me. So I went back to judo and uh, I fell in love with it. I think that as I got older, I was like, damn, this is such a cool sport. Because a lot of people don't understand it until you do it. That's why it's not as, as mainstream as it is. But once you do it and like you're, you can actually understand it, you're gonna be like, damn, this is such a nice, complicated sport to do. Wow, that's good. I didn't even know you went back and forth. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I moved. I moved from Egypt in 2012. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, was, who inspired you in the judo world? Uh, honestly, it's more the people around me that inspired me. But of course, I grew up watching Zentaraya, who's a minus 66 lightweight. That's why I think my judo is kind of like different from the heavyweights because I am a heavyweight. But it's mostly people around me. Of course, I picked up from everybody around me more than more than anything that's why that's why my judo is like has a lot of var variety compared to like a heavyweight so mm -hmm. yeah i think i picked it up from people i fought in canada more than anything wow that's good so what age did you uh start judo oh you already had that question yeah. who is your who inspires you in judo uh honestly i, I kind of watch the older guys like of course kosei inoue like uh Dennis Vendergast, those are really old school guys mm -hmm. and they're heavyweights, but they're, uh, they're people I grew up, I grew up watching. So it was really, really cool to actually see them in person. I actually met both of them in person. I was like, damn, that's so cool. Like I was freaking out a little bit. And then I was like, yeah. So both of them, I think, you know, and, uh, Dennis Vendergast. We have a question here from Lucas. Yes. Um, after things start to open up, um, do you mind coming to the JCC to do a clinic? Of course, yeah, I plan. I actually haven't been to the JCCC in a long time since the since the pandemic and everything. Of course, being on the road uh, for the Olympic qualifiers, but of course, that's I need to come back and like see since it can everybody at the dojo. I miss it. It's like, yeah. So I'll definitely, I'll definitely come. Back. What a great request. <laughs> It's hard to say no in front of 40 people. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I miss that. I miss the GCCC a lot. Um, we have a couple more in the chat. Do you mind sharing your favorite quote? Uh, honestly, it's more and more of a type of person that like, as I go through like Facebook or Instagram, I'll read a quote and it'll stick with me for a little bit. But it's more of like, a, it's not a quote. It's a way I live my life. Like, don't. Like, as long as you believe in yourself and you think you're able to do it, then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Because along my, my career, there was a lot of challenges. Uh, me trying to switch from Egyptian to, to Canadian, uh, as a Canadian, to fight for Canada and switch from Egypt, that was a three-year wait. And the Fe Egyptian Federation was trying to like screw me over a little bit. So as long as I believed in myself and I started the Olympic qualification a little bit late also. So as long as you believe in yourself, nobody can tell you what to do basically. Of course, within reasons, so, you know, but yeah. No, but inspiring, definitely motivating. Yeah. Um, we have a joke slash question. Any advice on how to beat your brother? Um, you have to kick him in the legs. Yes, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's a joke between me and Sensei Ken. He, he knows what it means. 
uh, <laughs> I think I don't think anybody can be my brother. Oh. <laughs> Nobody can be my brother. Have no. you ever fought your brother? Is another question here. Uh, yes, we fought twice, and it was at it was at a uh, Ontario Open, I think, and it was at nationals. And of course, me and Mohab don't fight each other at tournaments, so we kind of was like we're like we have a secret word. It's like bananas, and then somebody will throw the other. So me and Mohab are one and one right now. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you been kicked out and yelled at the JCC? From... <laughs> I can't even read that. I'm sorry. Sensei oh, from Sensei Ken. Uh, Sensei. <laughs> Sensei Ken, you want to answer that question? <laughs> no, he, he never got kicked out because he was the good one, actually. So. Oh. Good <laughs> one. Good answer. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I think Chris Brown has been had his hand raised for a while. Okay. Oh, I don't see that. Okay. I couldn't see that. My apologies. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, I'm outside. And there were some motorcycles driving by. I didn't want to. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, the question that I had is that you had mentioned you weren't so fond of judo when you were uh, back in Egypt. And then when you came to Canada, you sort of fell in love with it. Can you tell us a little bit more about why you fell in love with it? Like what was different that made you um, really think that, yeah, this is something I want to do? It was all, I think it was also, yeah, it was more the people around me, like I said, like Sensei Ken and everybody around me helped me kind of fall in love with it because when I was in Egypt, I was still young. I was very young and then I stopped at a very early age. So I didn't really understand the sport or I didn't really get to practice it the right, the right way when I was in Egypt. And then when I came to Canada and uh, I went to the JCCC, it was a very different experience. Like I never really did Niwaza that way until I went to the JCCC and I was like, oh damn, that's, that's so sick. And the more the longer I spent there, the more I learned with about judo and the more I fell in love with it. Wow. Is there anyone else that has any other questions? What's my favorite combination to attack? I have, it's uh, Ochi into Chimara from a high grip. So I'll start with an Ochi then I'll go with an Uchimara or a Kushiguruma. Kushiguruma is like when you grab from the high and put your hip in. Or I like to do a double foot sweep and then into a Kochigari. I feel like those two are my, my sneaky tricks. Into I'm going to do a video actually on Judo Fanatics tomorrow. I'm going to start filming it and I'm going to show you guys all my gripping and uh, all my techniques that I do. So even secret moves. So. That's great. And I help. Wow. Get some tips. Yeah. Any questions for some of the younger ones on the call? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we got one. Tell us your best memory in judo. Uh. This is from Yusuf. Yusuf. Yeah, I actually enjoyed a lot the, the traveling from Ontario to Quebec for the Quebec Open. Those were probably like the funnest trips I've had. Yeah, because like there was no stress and you were like with people you knew and it's like the tournaments were actually really good. The Quebec Open and the Ontario Open were really good. So we would do Ontario, we'd go to Quebec Open and then we'd go back right for the Ontario Open. So that was like a double back-to-back -to -back tournament and they were both really, well, uh, yeah, they were really good tournaments. So I kind of enjoyed it a lot, just traveling and being in Montreal, because it's very different for me, right? Like leaving Ontario and, uh, yeah. And Lucas has another question. Yes. Did you ever feel like giving up? Yeah, honestly, yeah, of course, because when the Olympics got, well, it got canceled and postponed and canceled and postponed. I was like, damn, like this is not looking too well. And I was like, damn, I, I was, I was called, I like did so many tournaments in the last two years, ridiculous amount of effort and a lot of training for, I was like, it's for nothing. And then I was like, no, it's as, as like, the more I did tournaments, the more memories I built, the more stuff I did. And I was like, I'm very grateful for that. So regardless of, even if not, if the Olympics get canceled next month, it is what it is, right? It's not the end of the world. So I'll find something else to do until the next cycle. So it'll be, 
yeah, of course, like, of course I felt like giving up even at training sometimes like, oh, training so hard. I don't want to do this anymore. But then you remember your main goals, right? If you put your main goals, you're going to stay motivated if you remember them. We had a question Thanks. from Sammy Rice. And is what is your favorite meal to eat? Uh, fried chicken sandwiches. Those are like, I really enjoy those. Like spicy fried chicken sandwiches. Really good. So that's that. But of course, like I can't eat that all the time. But uh, yeah, spicy fried spicy chicken sandwiches. We have one from Yusuf. Who made you cry once at National <laughs> and why? <laughs> We were in Vancouver. Actually, this is a funny story. We were in Vancouver and uh, we were staying at like, a, it's like an apartment type of hotel. And there was me, my three cousins, my brother and Martin, Martin Rigelski. I don't know if you guys remember him. Uh, and uh, it was Ramadan, so we we're fasting. And then when, the, when it was time to eat, I ate a whole jar of Nutella that we were supposed to share. Yeah, and then Yusuf made fun of me and I cried because I was little yeah was, we all love nutella though i can't even yeah. i'm not a whole fan of jar <laughs> a whole jar <laughs> <laughs> when it's not yours it tastes even better that's all i'm gonna say okay. <laughs> here's one uh, from uh, delana is jessica still better than you at the call of duty okay i need i needed that question that was a myth she was never <laughs> If you guys want to add me, you can message me on Facebook and I'll show you how good I am. I play Warzone, so yeah, I'll, I'll that was that was a lie from Jessica. Well, yeah, this is awkward because last week she was asked that question and she said it was her a hundred percent. We should that's what I'm saying. We should do a live a live stream of me against Jessica. Yeah, or Twitch or something. Where yeah, like, Twitch, yeah, I'm down for that. That'll um, be the, that'll be the real fight off me against Jessica and Call of Duty. Yeah, that actually would be really fun. <laughs> Um, we have one from Megan. Uh, why did you continue judo when as a kid and did you enjoy it? I didn't enjoy it as much. It's because also I was, I was very young compared to everybody else, like super young. So everybody else was way older than me. So yeah, I didn't enjoy fighting a lot of bigger guys that would beat me up every day. So I kind of stopped it and I kind of regret that. I feel like I would have gotten even better if I didn't stop it, but it was, it was, it was, I was a kid, right? And uh, I continue it because when I came back to, when I came, when I moved to Canada, I tried to play soccer and I didn't find any good teams to play with. So I was like, okay, like, let me try judo again. And then I was like, damn, I was such a stupid little kid for not enjoying this. This is so fun. Who doesn't like flipping and throwing people, you know? I think as you grow too, you start learning. Yeah. About, like, yeah. don't like too, right? 100%. Sammy says, do you still eat Nutella? Uh, not as much. It kind of kind of scarred me, you know, that, 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 that day. No, I'm kidding. I'll eat Nutella. I just, I prefer, I prefer savory stuff. I'm more of a pizza and then burgers for dessert more than ice cream for dessert, you know. Always go to. Yusuf says, what's next after the Olympics? I've been playing it year by year, month by month. I don't like to, to overthink it. And, but I plan on taking a small break, of course, to like refresh. I have a couple of surgeries I might need to do. And uh, yeah, then maybe start my business that I have in my mind, hopefully. That'll mm -hmm. probably be the, the plan. Sounds good. Sounds like Are you saying this Olympics or the next Olympics? You're gonna oh, I, I, I really, I'm, I'm definitely gonna do two cycles, of course. It's just after this one, I'll take a break probably like a couple months to do my surgery and mm -hmm. then uh, after that I'll, I'll get back to training of course and focus on the next olympics you winning world championships this year from yusuf that's the plan that's the plan honestly i feel like my first ever worlds i got seventh and i was not in the right mindset and seventh is pretty decent i guess you can say mm -hmm. so i think right now i'm the best i've ever been and i'm the strongest i've ever been and I'm coming off a gold medal, so I think this will be the the my best performance yet. Hopefully, it's more of a yeah, it's more of a warm up for the Olympics. I feel like the Olympics is what matter, but of course, I want that red patch too. Well, we're all rooting for you. Thank you so much. Right. That's the plan. Is there anyone else that had any other questions, concerns? 
Actually, can you tell us, not everybody probably knows what the red patch means. Uh, oh, yeah. So yellow jersey, maybe you can explain that, Shadi. Yeah, so ev everybody wears a blue back patch. So the back number you wear on your judo gi, that means you're just an athlete, of course, that's competing. And if you win the world championships, then you're the only person in your division that has a red patch. And it looks super sick. And if you win the Olympics, then for until the next Olympics, you have you wear a gold patch. And that's even sicker. So, yeah. I kind of want to do half and half. That's, that's the goal. You know, half red, half gold. And for you older people, sicker, I think, means good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you should put, like, you oh, know. I apologize, yeah. <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Toronto, Toronto slang got, got Toronto. To me I literally Toronto slang. Um, Sammy says has a actually really good question here. What would you give like words of advice? Do you have to give someone like his brother who seems to have lost a drive in judo? Let him come back into it slowly. A lot of people, especially when they're young or like even teenagers or anything, they the they, they won't always want to do the sport it's a very tough sport to do it all the time and I was one that didn't want to I lost the drive for the sport for a while but I feel like if you like slowly bring him once a few times to training with you or something or like bring it up or like talk to him about it it'll, it'll interest him again but like let him take it take his time and he'll slowly hopefully get back into it Ken is asking to say something of course coach <laughs> yes so Shetty's been very kind uh, about uh, giving props back to the club. And I think really what it is, it's a reflection back on him, but on really everyone on the club. I think, you know, we're all blessed as, as instructors and coaches that we have a lot of students who come through, whether they're kids or adults. And we just see literally thousands, right? But everyone's who they are, right? And you just hope that they'll find who they are even more and keep at it and you know, just enjoy what it is they're doing. And, um, you know, kudos, all the kudos, all the, all the kudos to Shetty for what he's accomplished and going to keep accomplishing. But he had such good support. And certainly not just from me, but I mean, from the other instructors and from uh, his cousins, from Safe and Yusuf, especially, I think, and from Mo. And, um, you know, I think, again, if I can say something to everybody, just, you know, enjoy what you're doing at judo. And we really, it's, it's hard for all of us right now because we can't do judo, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can watch it. But uh, vicariously, we all watch Shetty. You know, Shetty, we're watching you and we're cheering for you like we always do. Um, you know, I ask you to kick Mohab when you can, like why he's not here, but you know, in any ways. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it's just, it's part of what, life is right so yeah. just another part of judo training not being able to do judo okay so keep at it everybody and do your best and let's all cheer for shetty man great thank words you. of wisdom that was very well said yeah thank you see that's uh, what i'm talking about it's very very a lot of wisdom came through since it came to me so i was like yeah that's great you need people like that too yeah. um Yusuf is saying, talk to us about your uh, preparation coming into competitions. Uh, I think it's more of like, of course, it's uh, well, it's limited, of course, now, because I don't have a lot of heavy training partners. I think the heaviest guys are like Mohab and Zach Burt, and they're 90 kilos, and I'm 100 kilos. So, of course, it's very limited, and I, I wanted, of course, to do camps and fight a lot of heavier people in camps, but there's COVID happening, so that's limited. But I try to do as much as I can with what I have. So we'll probably do Motadachi. Motadachi is like when you're in the middle and you have to fight people in a row nonstop. So, yeah, of course, it's uh, – and I, I'm trying to be in the gym a lot more. I need to get stronger because I'm, I'm very scrawny and skinny compared to my competition right now. So I'll put on a lot of more meat on my body and uh, – Hopefully that will be good enough for me to, to medal at Worlds or my upcoming competitions. But it's also, yeah, it's a lot of judo, right? If you do a lot of judo in, in and out every day, you're going to get better. That's true. So maybe like, what's like for training, I guess, um, what's like your go-to? Like, is there any like set workout or set things that you do before? Yeah, we well, until when I'm home, we do a lot of gym, gym in the morning every day, and then judo at night every day. And at night, we mostly do 
uh, fighting five, five times, uh, four times a week. And then one day is more technical, relaxed judo. Uh, and then when it's competition week, we train once a day, of course, because we can't burn ourselves. And it's more of like a training to lose weight. So, yeah. If you watch, if yeah, if you watch the the UFC embedded stuff, I don't know if people watch UFC MMA here, but they're showing a lot of the way we deal with it too. It's very similar. Of course, we don't get punched in the face and kicked, but the cutting weight process and everything is very similar. Well, I'm sure everyone's going to be watching the Logan Paul and Floyd fight, <laughs> so maybe everyone can just look into that and see the videos that you were saying as well. Um, is there anything else? Does anyone have any? Other questions or advice? Mohammed, um, were you doing yoga earlier? Because it looked like you were standing on your head or something. I or was, was sir. I, I, I do usually 45 minutes of headstand before I say a word. So, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, earlier, uh, Brian uh, mentioned that uh, for old people, so a lot of a lot of young people here making comments and asking questions. I thought one of the old people should say something. As Shadi said, I uh, as a referee, I had a pleasure of uh, refereeing a lot of his uh, events uh, nationally, uh, mostly. And uh, he's a enemy of what we believe in judo, which are two uh, pillar of our sport, which is gentleness and humility. This young man, from the moment that I saw him on the mat with his brother, and his brother the same uh, attributes, he has always been humble. He has always been gentle. Uh, he probably can easily get a nickname of a uh, gentle giant. <laughs> he has a very humble character, and he's very uh, sweet, if I may use that for a young man. Uh, so I, I definitely believe with these two pillars that he... Uh, emulate every time I see him, which is gentleness and humility. He is definitely going to be one of the top judok because we're all going to be proud of uh, being a, wearing a maple leaf on his chest. So I, I personally wish him all the best. And uh, as he said, take it day by day and uh, just keep putting those notch on your belts and uh, doing the right thing. And one day will happen. I wish you all the best and God bless you, my man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Really appreciate that. Sweet. Um, have one from Megan. Why did you choose to learn judo at JCCC and not from another place? Uh, I think when I came to when I came from uh, from Egypt to Canada, uh, the Yusuf family was there already, and they're Egyptian, of course. So we kind of knew them from when we were back home too. So we followed them where they were. And uh, yeah, once you get there, you're gonna see how like training's taken seriously and trainings are really good. And uh, we won the team competition two years in a row. So it shows you that we're a good team. So yeah, I got, and it worked out for me, I guess. I, I, it was people I knew already there. It was a familiar environment and it worked out. It was a really good place for me to learn and uh, only, only improved me as a person. That's great. So who is your favorite coach and why? That was a very easy question, uh, <laughs> since again, of course, because I had no judo. My judo was disgusting before I, when I first came to Canada, I was like always watching WWE and it was like doing the leg grabs and like spearing people. So it was, it was, uh, very, it was very different. And uh, I feel like uh, Sensei Varga and Sensei Ken and everybody, again, everybody around me uh, improved my judo and it didn't get better for a while until like, I think 2015, when I won Bremen, that's when I was like, oh, my judo is actually getting better finally. So it kind of it was, it was a long process. I came in 2012 and I realized that like my judo is decent in 2015. So it took three, four years for me to define myself as a judoka. Wow. Yeah. Well, it does take time, right? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Shadi. Um, I think from here, uh, if anyone else does have any questions, we can keep it going. Um, how does everyone feel? Is there anything, any comments or any advice people would like to say? I just feel a lot of people put a lot of pressure to making it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you just put the work and you don't derive off your goal, then you're going to get there. It's honestly, of course, it was very hard to make the team and everything, 
but it's doable. And then when you go on the international circuit, I feel like when I was a kid, I was like, oh my God, Lepar Tiliani, this and this. And like, oh my God, he's so good. He's a legend. And I go there and I, I sometimes I do better than him. Sometimes he does like, we're all at the end of the day, Jodokas and everybody's beatable. So don't let that stress you out. Just go out there and do what you got to do. And I think anybody can be, can make it if they really put their mind to it. It's great advice. Thank you, Shadi. Okay, well, there's no more questions. I'm just going to uh, put this up for you, Michelle. Awesome. So thank you, Shadi, for all your advice and for the questions and for everyone here today. Um, we will be having uh, another um, uh, chat with a champion with our one and only Keegan Young. Um, and here are some of the accomplishments he's made as well with um, the Europe Cup the Youth Olympics, um, Canada World Championships, and the Pan Am Championships in Turkey. So if they're, you know, with these athletes and with like with judo, I think we do really need to support them. So like I said before in the beginning, there is a GoFundMe page for Shadi, and I would really appreciate if people could, you know, go after today's um, chat and see if he, if you guys could help him out. Um, if there's anything else too that you guys would like to ask Shadi before we leave today, make sure um, to raise your hand or message in the chat. But this is the GoFundMe page that you will find. Brian will be able to um, direct you there as well. But it would really help him um, on the road to Tokyo. And we do want to be rooting for him and supporting him. So um, yeah, if there's anything else that I've missed, Brian, or... Well, that's it. Yeah. It's great to see everybody. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, you can personally message me, Facebook, Instagram, I'll, I'll respond. So. Sure. Great. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you very much, guys. Um, hopefully, we'll see you here. i see you on the 15th with Keegan. And, uh, and have a great weekend. It looks like it's a nice day. At least it is in Ottawa. I think it's fairly nice in Toronto, too. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Awesome. Thank you. We're so on the ref. Much. We're on the referee seminar tonight. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Yes. Right. Everybody eat Nutella and send it to Yusuf. Thank you very much. <laughs> you love that. Alrighty. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.